Welcome to Ear Biscuits, I'm Rhett. And I'm Link. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we are going into uncharted territory. You said uncharted. That's, I, well, I'm sorry, but, you, you said, I said uncharted. I said uncharted, <laughs> but I have this toothpick in my mouth. I certainly hope this is uncharted territory <laughs> because I do not have plans to shart in the I, next hour or so. I thought it would be a good idea to have this toothpick. As I was coming back here to sit down, I walk by the front desk and you know, usually we have like gum up there, so, and which I'm not gonna chew gum, but maybe there's a mint. Yeah, so, why chew gum? So I gaze in that direction as I'm walking by and I'm, I'm like, what is that plastic box? And, I, and it, it, I, it gives me pause. I looked more closely and it's toothpicks. And I'm like, what the world? And they're. Why would that surprise you a lot? Because they Why were are toothpicks. Surprising. Because it said flavored toothpicks. It's like it's better than a than a just regular. Well, wood's good though. So I'm like wood flavor is good. I'm like flavored toothpicks. What flavor? Cinnamon. All of them are cinnamon. And then someone, a mythical crew member who shall remain nameless, said, "Oh, yeah, I, I quit smoking with those." <laughs> I was like, "You just needed something dangling from your lips in order to quit smoking. Good for you." They quit smoking with those, meaning they were previously lighting those on fire and smoking them, and they were smoking <laughs> cigarettes, and this is the method that they used to It's kind of like cigarettes. Hank Williams Jr. using <clears throat> lifesavers to get off cigarettes. What is that line? I use lifesavers to help me get, get off, off cigarettes. cigarettes. But you know for your love, I ain't found no lifesavers life yet. Um, we won't sing the whole song, but you should listen to the whole song. But the tough it, okay, we won't. Um, so Old I thought, Habits I thought, by Hank Williams Jr. Good song. I thought I would give it a shot, and then lo and behold, right off the bat, I said sharded. Yep, well, cause it's just because of the flavored toothpick. If it wasn't flavored, you would have definitely hit the ch and chart. No, it's just it's just dangling right there. You gotta, it doesn't make me, what I was trying to say was, we're going down the rabbit hole in this episode. We've got an envelope there. We do not know what's inside of it. A completely uncharted rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean. Totally clean rabbit hole. If you, <laughs> if you, I mean if you didn't know me. Uh, yeah, that would be a different And you clicked on life, the video it? version of this podcast or just met me on the street and we had a conversation. I had this toothpick dangling from my lips like I do right now. Douchebag. Douchebag or a hayseed, hillbilly. You don't know. I mean, there's nothing else about you if, unless yeah, you yeah. start talking that would <laughs> that would make me think that you were a hillbilly. Yeah, and so I would just be. I would go straight to douchebag. I would bypass hillbilly straight to douchebag. What about former smoker? I mean, I'm saying this as a person who recently wore sunglasses during an entire episode of Ear Biscuits, which was the ultimate douche move. Yeah. And I I caught it on, on, on the Twitter and the Instagram and the people who took uh, the, the screenshots, et cetera. Uh, re people who got it out of context, just like I predicted, said, what is Rhett thinking? Who does he think that he is? He, yeah. yeah, won't do it again. Well, that's why I'm Except not. Except I probably will. I'm, I'm getting rid of this toothpick because it, it, it messes up the audio experience as well. You want it? Uh, Try it. That's not how toothpicks work. Use typically. the other end. No, nope. um, I can imagine what it tastes like. The cinnamon kind of makes my lips burn. Tell me something I don't know. Uh, mm. Well, I uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit before we get into the rabbit hole. Now, the, first of all, these will be a sponsor in a couple of weeks, and and we'll talk about how great these are. We'll be we'll both be having them the whole ear biscuit. Sure, definitely. The price is right. I went hiking, family hike. You know. Sometimes when you've got a weekend and you begin feeling like your children are spending too much time with the media, and I don't mean like the news media, I mean like, you know, right. screens we call it. Leaking information to the media. You're just like, we gotta get out, yeah. we gotta do something as a family. Yeah, and interestingly, it. when you live in Los Angeles, unlike when you live in North Carolina, um, you know, when I was a kid, if you got stir crazy, you just went outside and there was woods behind my house that you could kind of explore 
indefinitely and there was like, there's just a whole world that you could kind of explore. You if and you I. Get, if you get bored with that, there's like manholes you can pry open. Yeah, we did lots of things that we should Go down have. in the sewer. But we it, did that. It's kind of a combination of the fact that it's 2018 and this doesn't happen as much and also the places that we live. You just don't let your kids just, hey kids, just go out in the neighborhood and I'll see you in a few hours. Like, that just doesn't really happen uh, that much. No. And so, you have to orchestrate outings. Uh, you either like take them to somebody's house where they've kind of got some room or something like that, but most often it's like, let's go to a place that has been designated. Kids, I'm gonna take you to somebody's house. They've got a room or something. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you just, just have a blast. <laughs> but typically the way it works is you find a space that the people of the greater Los Angeles area have deemed appropriate for outdoor activities. Sometimes that is a, a, a city park, that gets old, but one of the cool things that we do have is you just had a little bit outside of town and you got these, you, you're in you're in uh, Angeles National Crest, Angeles National Forest, forest. That's, that's a national forest. That's a, I don't know exactly what that means, but it's a national forest. It is recognized on a national level as being a forest. That's something to say, you know? Well you said it, brother. <laughs> and so, we went, I have the adventure pass. You gotta have the adventure pass just to get into the National Forest and park your car. I don't know exactly know why. But we drove up into, you've been up to Little, I don't know if it's Little or Big, Tahunga Canyon. No. The, uh, Tahunga Canyon uh, is a canyon that goes up into the Angeles National Forest and I guess it's Tahunga Creek or, anyway, there's a there's a, there's a a hiking trail up there. That was it burned? That's where the fires were. Some places were burned. Okay. Uh, but, I, but I grabbed the family, I put them in the car, we brought Barb along with us because she also is into the media. I mean, Barbara. You gotta get your dog yeah. off of screens? Yeah, yeah, she loves cable news. I mean, she will just salivate over cable news. She can't get enough of it. People yelling at each other. And uh, so we had to we had to pull her away from that. And she needs grooming right now. She's got a little too much hair. But, uh, so I was a little bit worried because it was getting to be like an 80 degree day and mm -hmm. we were gonna be hiking and lots of sun. I think I saw you on the way there. Didn't you pass me oh, when you? Oh yeah, because you were dropping off uh, Lily at Lily's, a friend's house. Lily's friend at her house. Yep. Yeah. I passed you, you. I saw I saw all of you in the car, and I gave you a head nod. Yeah. You didn't. Did stop, you notice? You didn't. You didn't stop, and I, I, I'd seen you. I'd seen you the night before. Yeah. No need to. No need to reconvene. No. So I could tell you were on your way to a national forest. I had my hat on. Yeah, you had a hat did on. Did you see the sunscreen? No, probably Ooh, you not. Put on sunscreen. I, you I'd really prepped up. I rubbed it in. Well, you got to put sunscreen on at least thirty minutes before exposure. Did Barbara get hot or something? She did. Well, we get on on the trail, and uh, these are the things that we dealt with as a family. Uh, number one, I, is your family this way? When you hike, is it not peaceful? I mean, it's, the point is being peaceful, but first of all, I, no, it's never peaceful. Not from peaceful. The, from the moment you know, I got home, and I we actually went for what I did not call a hike, I said, all right, kids, you're getting uh, off screens. A nature walk. Nature, I said nature walk. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, That's the only other thing it could be. You've tried that? No, but I should have. Yeah, I call it a nature uh, it walk. Sounds very science -y. And they just roll their eyes. They're like, Dad, you're trying to take us on a hike. I was like, no. <laughs> it's The place that we're gonna go is uh, relatively flat. Yeah, because take a hike has got a negative connotation, but take a nature walk is like, well, I'm in, field trip. Yeah, it's about na nature walk is is implies no incline, no 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 grueling nature to it. Right. Just Sh shade. Pe it also pe feels sh shady. Peaceful. Well, yeah. we were not in the shade. We were in the extreme heat. I did an orientation before we got started because uh, apparently rattlesnakes are really bad this year. More on that later. Um Oh. <laughs> that's what they call a teaser. And uh so I um I was like, kids, you got you got to stay on the path. Do not go traipsing off into the 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 just the, the 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 grasses because there's snakes in the grasses, and I don't want you to get bit by a rattlesnake. I don't want to deal with that today. Yep, it, it would inconvenience it you. It would be a horrible da day for dad if kid got bit by a rattlesnake. Yep, yep. So, I there's, uh, there's nothing more inconvenient than a child losing <laughs> the use of a limb. Right. So I. Uh, 
I'm out on the, the trail and again, it's not peaceful because we can't seem to have a conversation without somebody having a problem with something else that somebody says. Everybody in my family has a strong will, me included. And uh, eventually I was like, let's just be quiet for a little bit and just hear the sound of our dog panting, because she was, and the sounds of her own footsteps and na the nature walk. And uh, this trail, by the way, highly recommended if you're in the greater Los Angeles area. I think it's called Tahunga Canyon Waterfall Trail or something of that question nature. Mark? When you search it, put a question mark at the end. And uh, it's like a two mile hike that uh, continues to rise in elevation as you follow along. And first of all, you're inside the National Forest, but right at the top of the trail, there's all these people who, I don't know how they're doing it, they're living out there in houses that look like houses that have been there for a long time that were like ranger cabins or something. I've seen this in multiple but they, places. But they yeah, live and there. And they're like grandfathered in, so even though there's gates that you can't drive through, they, they have, have keys a key to the gate. They have a key to the gate. And then they'll drive up in there and just live there, and there'll be signs that says private residence. Yeah, there was don't, a guy in a Mazda. Don't mess with me, I'm not, don't ask me questions about your nature walk. Yeah, it said private, do not disturb the yeah. residents. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, but I was so interested in what their Disturbing lives are them? like. Wanted to disturb them so bad. I bet they had screens. You oh, I heard, at least I heard I heard audio. I heard definite media. Radio. Something was going on, I think maybe AM radio. Listening I don't know. to like the Grand Ole Opry or something. And, uh, but I was fascinated with that and then, I, you know me, I have a tendency when introduced to a new environment, I have a tendency to continue to point out what I think is cool about it. It's just in my nature to be like, and then I have a tendency to try to get the people that I'm with to also think to that it's cool. To share an enthusiasm. And I do that too, man. I, I think it's a dad thing in general, but I'm like, hey guys, isn't this awesome? <laughs> These people live up here. <laughs> and, and, and they're all kinda like, I'm kinda glad we don't live up here. I'm like, isn't that, isn't this cool? Isn't this the fact that this is so close to our house awesome? And, and then Locke is like, Dad, why do you always have to try to get us to like things? Yeah. Yeah, I, well, because you're not saying how much you like it. I take the kids to school um, a few times a week. It's it's it. I consider it a special occasion. Yeah, and um, I'm taking Lily and Lincoln to school, and the way that I go is down this one particular street, and there's this one house that has a whole bunch of trees, which is unusual and cool. It's like a forest. So every time I and then right. The house right beside it has a bunch of cacti. Oh, even Huge cooler. cacti. So every time I go by it, I'm like, hey, look at the cactus. And then, uh, and they hate it. They, yeah, they don't wanna be told L what Lily, to look at. Lily hates it. She's like, dad, don't, now before I say anything, she's like, point out the cactus, dad. <laughs> and then the very next lot, there's all these trees, and I'm like, look at that one tree. It grew, and then it went sideways yes. and started growing. It, it shaped like a lightning bolt. Yeah. And they're like. We don't care, Dad. She's so annoyed by it, I, I don't know. get it. My whole family hates me for <laughs> it. <laughs> for, for, just, for just enjoying life. I'm a cool I mean, spotter. I mean, yeah, I spot cool I stuff I know when too. things are cool and I like to point them out. I guess somehow when I start saying it's cool, it's no longer cool. And matter of it's fact. Felt so defeated. Right before I saw you on the way to the National Park when I was dropping off Lily's friend at her house, we went down the same street and Lily goes, Dad, I just wanna warn you, Dad is going to point out this cactus and then he's gonna point out this tree that's shaped like a lightning bolt. And I was like, I'm going, I'm gonna get her. And I, I drove right past it, I didn't say a word. Ooh. Didn't point out anything. Look at that, just she take felt it in. Stupid. Nature walk, stupid. So uh, the highlight of the trip though was when we got to the end and uh, Barbara was having a very difficult time. Barbara's not used to this. Again, watches a lot of cable news, spends a lot of time inside. In fact, when you get the leash ready to walk her, she goes underneath the couch. She does. She does not want to go outside. She, she has Such a lot a of diva. She has a lot of energy inside the house. She's got. I mean, she's losing energy, man. She's oh, losing it. She she's passed two and a half now. She's depleting. She just. Loves, she likes to get love and to give love, and that's about it. Well, okay. And um, but we get down to the place where we're going to descend to the waterfall. Which, by the way, best waterfall in the local area as far as I could tell. I showed you a, a little video of the, the yeah. what I took. I, mean, I was amazed. It's like a 30 foot waterfall with a with a, with a a swimmable little pool at the bottom. Wow, that just uh, doesn't happen. Feet, I mean, it's incredible. Uh, also a little crowded because of that, because it is Los Angeles, even if you're way out there. But we get to a place where you have to descend down to the waterfall via uh, a very steep incline and a rope. You have to 
You have to back down Freaking a rope. Belay into the yeah. Are you like right beside the waterfall? No, <clears throat> this is about a uh, hundred yards down from the waterfall. But this is the place to get down to the creek to walk back up because you've been on an incline that's getting steadily, steadily higher and further away from the creek, and then you kind of come back down to the creek. So all of a sudden, you weren't pointing out something that was cool. You were like, "Look, kids, a, a rope!" Oh crap! No, Locke and Shepard had already des- we got way ahead of us and descended down into you know, the canyon. And I got up there and Jesse, she was like, are you gonna be able to, I mean, how are we gonna get Barbara down? And then I saw a woman, oh, at that moment, a woman pulls herself up to the top of the cliff with a baby in a Bjorn. Oh yeah. And at that point I'm like. Can I borrow your Bjorn? At that point I'm like, well, I, even if I or Barbara or both of us die in this process, it's worth it because a woman with a, with a newborn baby just ascended the cliff. It's worth it or the, she, she challenged you the, she, non-verbally. She, she put my pride on the spot. Right. So I went down with one hand on the rope, one hand on Barbara because Barbara is again, if you put her down on the slope, she'll just literally lay down and will not move. She had done that multiple times. Every time she got to a shady spot, she just laid down and you had to kind of tug her on her, on her leash. She's like, I know you're coming back this way. <laughs> I'll be here on so, the flip side. After some intense rope burn on my right hand, I did get down and then I got to the bottom and I looked up and I was like, the real problem is not getting down, it's getting back up. But which, let's not think about that right now. Which now you have to do. Let's enjoy the waterfall. Again, there was three ladies, friends, who were up there enjoying the waterfall and I go up there and my kids are yelling at each other and pushing each other and I'm like, guys, show some respect. I'm in the dad mode. <laughs> and I'm like, these women are sitting here trying to enjoy themselves. Of course, we're in this, they hear them talking. You can't, you can't help going into dad mode. You know, I'm if like, it. Don't you have any self respect for these women? If they're not enjoying pointing, themselves? If you're not pointing out something cool, you're, you're reprimanding kids. Yeah. And then once I got them to start pushing on each other, and I, by this time I notice these ladies are laughing because this is like a sitcom that they're they're witnessing. <laughs> then I'm like, hey, Locke, take a picture of me and mom in this waterfall. <laughs> oh gosh. I had to redirect his freaking picture seven times because I was like, listen, I want us and the waterfall, the whole waterfall from the top to the bottom. And by the end, I'm speaking like that, trying to get just a nice picture of me and my <laughs> wife. <laughs> Just take the freaking picture. Yeah, and the women are still there watching the show. They're loving everything about it. <laughs> so then we have to leave and at that point, they begin to talk to us and they say, how are you gonna, I don't know how you're, you're gonna, gonna get, get up that, that cliff. Hmm. I was like, I don't either. But then I said, you want a dog? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that wouldn't have solved anything because then they would have had the same problem. I assume you <laughs> ladies live down here. So what I ended up doing is putting, uh, taking everything out of my day pack, putting it around like a Bjorn in the front, strapping it in the back so that it was nice and secure, opening it up, giving the stuff that I had, the snacks and stuff, to Jessie, and she put it in this weird fashionable double fanny pack that she was wearing. Never seen that before, she just broke it out for the nature walk. And then I put. She's probably had that for <laughs> four years. I put Barbara inside this thing, and Barbara no likey, the bag. She wants to get out, and so oh. I have to hold her in the bag, which kind of defeats the purpose of the bag, but it is easier than actually holding the, her whole body. You could have punched her in the head and knocked her out. That's like B.A. Pr- Baracus. That was plan B at the A-team. There. You know, every time the A-team traveled, they had to knock him out. You'd think he would know it was coming, <laughs> but every episode where they have to fly. But it was a shot. They knock him out. Yeah, with a, with a drug. They didn't know. Sometimes he'd get punched in the face. Yeah, but but a lot of times it was a it was a it was an injection. injection? If I remember correctly. Either way, he should have known it was coming. You know the A Team theme song plays on my phone all the time. You know how it's the first song by alphabetical order in my iTunes, and so when my pl- phone hits the signal sometimes with Bluetooth, I've heard the beginning of the A Team song at least fifteen hundred times. I can think <laughs> of no better song for that. To be the case in 1982, with. a team of uh, I can't remember. Oh, I, it has I, the voice of I, Oh yeah, I should have it memorized. <laughs> anyway, so the, I, I bypassed the rope. I had to bypass the rope and climb up the cliff without the rope because it was actually easier to just grab hold of rocks while holding on a barber. Actually, wasn't that bad. Oh, I got back up, felt a little bit like a hero, and then silently nature walked back to the car. Did you keep her in the bag the rest of the time? No, or? she got out as soon as she got to the top, and she was panting. I noticed. When she gets really hot, she pants a lot, and her tail, which is normally up, falls down. It's like a thermometer. Did she have water, man? Yeah, we had a little cute, little pink, little uh, collapsible okay, thing okay. that we would put water in, and she had plenty of water. She just didn't like the the idea of the nature walk. 
Anyway, I suggest hiking with your family. We're gonna open an envelope here in a second, but first, <laughs> let's plug some mythical merch, shall we? Let's do that. Look at this. This is the good mythical summer camp shirt featuring yours truly and Link around a campfire that has the GMM uh, logo coming out of the fire as it there's as some, it is. There's some details in the background that you're really gonna appreciate when when you have it on your person and you're looking down at it. This is a ring tee. We recently uh, were given reason to believe that this makes you look more muscular when you wear it. I, I wore it in this uh, Will It Slip and Slide episode and in Good Mythical Moral we're spitting watermelon seeds. I'm reading the comments and I'm like, everybody's talking about how is Link working out? Link looks mm. buff and I'm like, it must be that shirt. Liter literally, I'm sure that it's the shirt. Well the shirt has a lot to do with it. So get um, yourself a ring tee and you don't have to work out. Yeah, just it makes you it makes you look muscular. Mythical.store, that's the website. Thanks for supporting entertainment. All your needs. Okay, you wanna open up this envelope? I do. I get a little nervous at this point, like, what can it be? Oh gosh, that could have been smoother. If we don't talk, we're gonna have to put a drum roll in there. Okay. <sighs> okay. Carolyn 1798-0742, because a lot of other Carolyns were taken, asks, wow. or actually demands, find the 15th picture in your phone camera album. Oh, what is goodness. it? And give us the backstory behind it. Oh, wow. Winky emoji. This is. Hmm. I got a lot of pictures now, in my phone. Here's the thing about pictures in my phone. I have, I have every picture I've ever taken in my phone because I semi-recently went through the tough work of moving all of my pictures to Google Photos, which uh -huh. which then, uh, you know, they update to the cloud immediately. Can you, can everywhere. you back out to years, organized by years like I just did? How do you do that? Go to collections on the on the lower part there. Are you know, you're, you're you're on you're you're saying you're in Google Pictures. Okay. Yeah, the first on my the first picture I have is from February of 2004. Well, the first picture I have is 2000 October 9th 2003. Oh my gosh. Okay, so before we answer her question, let's look at the first picture. Well, the very first picture I have from February 2004 is a picture of <laughs> my driver's license, Christy's driver's license, my social security number card, and Christy's social security Let's put security that number. on the screen, so let's please. Put that, let's, yeah, let's roll that <laughs> with no censoring. Uh, look at- You for, shouldn't have that on your freaking phone, man. Why, is that, why do you have that? Well, I got my driver's license in my pocket. What's the difference? I mean, I just feel like having it digital, having it just And out look at in the, the picture open. of me. I never remember having this configuration of facial hair. I, I remember thinking that I should talk to you about it. I have, I've got the hair of defeat, like I've got engineering hair. Well, I can't talk, I I, I, I have a talk. goatee with no mustache. Let me see. It's a goatee, but I have no, I, I did not, I like did this for one day, and it was the day I got my You did it for license. more than one day. You did it for more than one day. I don't remember that, but the, I'll also, and then the first, the next picture I have is from January 2006. You're gonna go through all the pictures? Yeah, <laughs> it's a picture of me and, uh, me and Christy in front of our white minivan. Oh, that was a good minivan. Th this was a picnic that Christy and I went on when um, we, this was in the little patch of grass beside the Imperial Theater in Cary, North Carolina. We went to see a movie. Now you do know that Caroline asked for the 15th picture. Oh, I know, I was just sidetracked by. But, what, what's the oldest but, picture you but have? But to match you, I will say, the oldest picture I have is from October 9th, 2003 and it is my pregnant wife. Oh wow. And Oh wow. Uh, standing in front of When I say oh wow a couple of times I'm making fun of myself cuz I hate it when I say oh wow. Oh wow. Yeah. And whenever I say it I say it again and then I realized no one knows I'm making fun of myself. They just think I'm saying oh wow twice. Yeah. Say it three times then. Oh know. wow. So this was in. She's uh, rather pregnant. When we this is October two thousand three. Locke was born in February two thousand four. So she had a good five months to go. But she's standing in front of a closet door, which is where no, this is. I think she slept. This is not a closet door. 
This is the door. It's a thin door. To our bedroom. What? This is when we lived uh, above my in-laws garage. Remember that? So we lived in uh, Chapel Hill, bought that house in Chapel Hill and then we moved out to move to Fuquay yeah. while we're getting ready to buy the house in Fuquay. And oh, it's yeah, been the, a whole year. The back house. Living in her parents' back house uh, above the garage. Which but was why just is the a, door that thin? Because it was everything was small, man. Everything was small, and that's that's the that's she's almost so pregnant she can't fit through the door. That's the door going into the bedroom, which I couldn't stand up in. But let me tell you, I didn't need to. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, because see. you slept in there. It's a bedroom, you jerk. <laughs> man, remember back when our wives were pregnant? Yeah, boy. <clears throat> when Chrissy was pregnant, with all three kids, we slept in a double bed. I mean, and when a but not with the children with the in the belly, yes, yeah, I, yeah, I know. But you just made it sound like your whole family slept in a double bed, and what, I know that's not what you meant. What you meant was the two of you slept in a double bed. No, the three of us, but and, one and, was in and, utero until very, very, very recently, actually. <laughs> yeah, relatively recently. I didn't get a queen size bed until um, well, if you're if 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 your partner's pregnant, I'm choking up. If your partner's pregnant, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> I think you need at least a queen bed if you're gonna keep sleeping with him. Because I don't know how you did that, man. She would roll over and it would it would it would be like a it would be like an act of God <laughs> for her to roll over. I mean Like the this, tides would shift. Yeah, it's like uh <laughs> it's like the, the there's a lunar part of the equation. <laughs> you're drinking a glass of water and you're like I mean it was that it got to be that big, you know, and then when yeah. she would I mean she would have to roll over it was an event. She would have to roll over like one of those hot dogs in a 7-Eleven. Like I'm sure that she in appreciates place. this. I'm glad she doesn't listen to the podcast. Because actually she started listening to it. Oh, she has. Um, we got one of them now. <laughs> but she would, both of us would have to roll over in place like a hot dog. And you know what I'm talking about, on like the rollers in the 7-Eleven where it doesn't. I'm fully aware It doesn't that. change its location, it just changes its orientation. And she had to do that with a, I mean, and you can't, I can fully roll over like a hot dog, but when you have a baby in your belly, yeah. can you imagine having to do that? No. Boy, I'm glad that was over. I didn't, it made me uncomfortable being that close to a human being inside of a human being's belly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause it, it just, I mean, it just, it, it was uncomfortable for her. You just feel like you, some, you can hurt somebody. But we were so close. Somebody. I mean, like, we were, we were, it, the thing that we loved about it was the room, our bedrooms are always small, so it wasn't just a bed and nothing else. It, we were able to have other furniture. That's how small our bedrooms always were. And it also made us physically more close to one another. So, but you can, you know, the you adage. Can, you can you know, do that in a king bed. You can also not do that. You have an option. Right. But I, it kind of forces us together. So if we were having a fight, you know, it's a good habit to not. Not let the sun go down in your, on your anger, so to speak. Do you need to resolve it before the next day? If it all, I, it kind of forced us to do that <coughs> because you can't you can't be in like a big argument with somebody and then hop in bed and just spoon. I think I can. W which were you the back spoon or the front spoon? <laughs> uh, I I don't I don't recall, but I, I've known I've I, I've gotten in bed mad before, and my wife was also mad. But you still spoon? Uh, you know, you but you have a king bed. Spoon's probably not. You've the right never word had for a it. double bed. Uh, no, yeah. For right from the beginning, we went. I mean, I'm a big man. Uh, you know, I need a yeah. I need a big bed. I mean, so I'm not shaming you. That was one of the things I was most excited about getting married was a king size bed. California king. I went straight to California before I ever moved to California. I was in California when I was in North Carolina. That's how much I was into it. But a California king is not longer. It's it is just wider. Nope, it's just longer. It's not. It's actually more narrow. Oh, is that right? So a typical king bed is eighty by eighty, but a California king is eighty four by seventy six. It's eighty four inches long, seventy six. So you're a little bit closer, but your feet don't hang off if you're the redster. I should do commercials. If you're a California king company, contact. So me. you need, you need that extra four inches to not have your feet hang off the bed. If I if I if I got some uh, a couple of extra pillows. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you never if you're know. Sliding down, <laughs> you never know. I mean, we on a regular king size bed, I get close to the edge. Yes, definitely. You mean the end, the end or the edge, whatever you want to call it. Can and, I can I count to my fifteenth picture? And no, it's the rabbit hole, man. 
now I sleep with my. <laughs> but that doesn't mean you wife don't answer the question. And my dog. And she takes up too much. Room, I'm just going to I'm going to need just a, a, a moment like she's of silence still pregnant. to count to fifteen. Just count out loud to fifteen. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. I'm not going to be able to show this picture without permission. Let me see that. It's my it's my wife in the hospital bed. Is she? She just had the baby. Hold on, you went 15 from the back. You went 15 the wrong, you counted the wrong direction. The 15th picture in your. The 15th picture in your phone camera album. Oh, I thought it meant from the, from most recent. Well we can do that too, Link. <laughs> but that typically would be. That's why I was so happy to be going all the way back. Yeah, I was I didn't wondering. Know, I thought we were off, off Topic the whole time. No, we were very close. We because we had to go back to the first one to <laughs> we then were 14, get to the fifteen. We were fourteen off. I thought we were like thousands away. Yeah, I deal with this all the time. By the way, hey, um, it's, it's a common mistake when you sleep in cr cramped environments your whole life. Uh, but this is the, okay. So this is while Jesse is waiting. I'm and I'm not. Go, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not going to show. I, I, I'm not going to talk about this picture too much because I'm not going to show it. And I don't want to frustrate you. But I'll just tell you, it's my wife. Uh, lying in the hospital bed and her parents uh, next to her, her dad is caught with his eyes closed in, in a weird expression. The baby has not been delivered yet. The no. baby's still in the belly. And somebody is somebody's hand is in the frame with a sippy cup of some sort. Probably, you know, probably my sister-in-law with a sippy cup for her second Oldest son who's just like a year and a half older than Locke. It could be a nurse, because right when that baby pops out, you know the first thing you do is slam a sippy cup in their hand. Let them let them get hydrated. The more interesting stuff I'm seeing around around that can't talk about it. It's not 15. Is the pictures that we took before? Let me count mine, then you can go to that. Okay. Unless you want to go to well, it. Well, it's not that interesting. It's just I remember we had a meal, and I was like, "This is the last meal we'll ever have," uh, as Two people, as opposed to three, as the McLaughlin family. Um, again, my wife doesn't want me to show you pictures of her the day before she had her baby. Uh, that would be that would be like talking about your wife and how turning her turning over while pregnant is like being a hot dog at the Seven Eleven. It's not the kind of thing. I was just saying she had to do. It's it. It's not the place. kind of thing a self-respecting person does. With the help of God. <laughs> All right. Now, should I count duplicates because? Do, well, you know what? I think this gives you the option to do both. Why don't you go fifteen with duplicates and then fifteen uh, by bypassing the duplicates? All right. One, two. Oh, I clicked on it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Yeah, that one's that's nothing. If, so if I do skipping, nothing. You can't just say nothing. You have to say what it is and tell okay. us why it doesn't matter. Okay. This is it's my father-in-law. With one of my children, I can't tell which one it was. <laughs> they all look the same when they're kids. That's Lincoln. Yeah, that's Lincoln, you're right, I was just joking. <laughs> and a guitar. Um, when Lincoln when Lincoln was a, a baby, he was obsessed with the guitar. He would call it, my tar! Give me my tar! <laughs> he's probably, he's not, Two years old. I mean, no, like that's, that's one, like eighteen one, months max. One and a half, yeah. Um, and he would go crazy for this guitar. I, I see. Here's another picture of him. See, he's playing the guitar there, and that's it. That's not at um, my father-in-law's house. That's at my nanny's house, my mom's mom. I don't want to frustrate the the no, the, I can the, show the audio listeners too much though because. Okay. While we can, well, I'm not gonna. Sh I don't think I'm gonna show any of these pictures. I, I can talk to my wife about it, but it's just you know, she'd rather me not show pictures of the very late stages of her pregnancy. Okay. So because of the hot dog. Yeah, and so out of respect for her, I won't do that. So, but out of respect for you, uh, listener and watcher, I'm not gonna talk too much about them. The just specifics the of the that picture. They make me think about. Yeah, Lincoln was obsessed with 
guitars and he would just go nuts if you took the guitar away from him. Like one time at Nanny's house, we took the guitar away from him in order to, I don't know, leave or do something else and he went so ballistic, like he started screaming and throwing a tantrum and he turned so red that then he started to turn blue. <laughs> like everyone got s legitimately scared and then gave him the guitar back and he was totally fine. I mean, it's like even from that young of an age, it's like sometimes you just, you can't win. You know, you have to lose. It seems like right. they're gonna they're gonna die. Are you saying you don't wanna look at any other pictures? No, no, I'm, uh, well, did you, did you find your actual 15th with duplicates? Let me do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh, it's the other guitar picture, the one that I already talked about. That's the, that's the actual 15th if you count. Hmm. So nothing there. Well, the the thing that this makes me think about in general is that um, our only pictures, when you go back to the first digital pictures that we took, yeah, um, are these pictures that are very much like family oriented. Like, and, and and I look at all the pictures from 2004 and 2005, and it's just my kids. It's just all my kids. It was like that was those were the occasions to take pictures. Thought about this quite a bit. And our, you know, our kids were born, like we were born at a really interesting time when it comes to uh, the way that our lives were cataloged, right? So for us, there's absolutely no evidence, no video evidence of us up until middle school at the earliest. And I yeah. think that probably, I mean the, the, the Oedipus video that was online at some point, and I think you still have somewhere. Yeah, we that that was like a school project video. That's the first video that we ever. Yeah, that that made. is that is amongst, if not the first. That was eighth grade. Video evidence of us that is available out there was when we were already we were already teenagers, basically yeah. like thirteen years old. Um, and then of course. There's not really any more, I mean, there, there, once we started, and of course there's a little bit as we got older and then once we hit, you know, we didn't really get started in this business until mid, late 20s and so, and then from then on there's too much evidence of us. You know, yeah. you, you can't get away from it. But with our kids, they were born at a time when, you know, when our kids were born, the phones that we were using did not have cameras. Yeah, I, so, I remember being obsessed with getting a small video camera that I could like keep in my pocket. And then I finally picked out the one that I wanted. It was like some sort of cannon. It was like you held it like a gun and then it had a thing that yeah, popped up on the side. About. It was very small. And within the first couple of weeks I it got stolen or I lost it or something. Somehow I, I and then I never replaced it. Well, I, I was like, man, one day this will be in the phone, like video capability. But we both had, um, we both had digital eight, Sony digital eight cameras. We yeah. each bought one and in, in, in our very first stuff that we ever shot was shot on those digital eight, like a mini, a, a digital eight tape, which is a small tape that then, um, I can't remember exactly how this worked, but because it was digital. But this was still like 1997, 1998. This is college. Uh, yeah, but we continued to use that technology yeah. up until like, in fact, just recently, um, I took all my, I, there was like four hours of video footage that I captured on my honeymoon. Whoa. Uh, I don't know how I got you four hours worth of video. Must have been bored. I was, I, was, I was busy I was, doing other things. I was videoing everything. <laughs> and um, just like constantly running this video camera. We've never ever looked at any of it. And just six weeks ago, I took all those tapes, including a bunch of other tapes that I had, just random stuff, took it to a place in Burbank and they digitized, digitized the whole thing and then gave me a drive. I haven't looked at it. Oh, you have a drive? I have a drive with all that footage on it. 
So Jesse and I, at some point with the kids, after I probably screen it, are gonna look down, look at all this this footage. But it's it's crazy to think about the. You should have paid them to edit it down to a four and a half minute montage. Yeah, I don't, I don't want that though. Well, they did they look at all of it or did they like mindlessly press play on a tape well, and then digitize when we, it? When we asked them to because they had it for a few weeks, when we asked them what the status was, they were like, we're doing some color correction or something like that. Like, what? I, I think what they do is they have some like effect that they can put on there to, they know that, okay, digital eight tape that's from this time. It isn't like they're going through and, and literally analyzing every scene. They're like doing like a overall tr post treatment to it. But it made it sound like, we've been reviewing your four hours of honeymoon footage. <laughs> And uh, by the way, it's also stored locally on our server. You know, like I, they, I, I, hopefully they've deleted everything. I don't know how it works, the privacy issues and that kind of thing. But I'm thankful for the service. But, and I have sporadic, uh, what I'm getting to is, the, is the, the record of our kids' lives that we have and how they were born in this really weird time in which we began to have uh, the ability to video them with these weird formats. So actually, yeah. there was a there was a Sony camera that I had that was a a, a, a still camera, point and shoot. But a, then it had a video. But it had a video yep. capability, and it created a file that was this proprietary Sony thing. And I took all my video of Locke in his first year with the most of my video with Locke in his first year, maybe even more of that with this video with this camera and then in the process of my library getting backed up and you know how it's like you get a new computer and it like moves over and then it moves to iCloud and there, well, there was before iCloud there was something else and anyway, through this process. Can't open it. You can't get to any of those. In fact, they're no longer video files. It's not that I can't open them. I have these video files and it's the only thing that is saved at this point is just the thumbnail, a still image from that video and it's heartbreaking. You know, I don't have that, that part of his life because he was born in 2004, the time when everybody was coming up with weird video formats to put on your little mm -hmm. point and shoot camera. And then Shepard had the benefit of being uh, born in 2008 and just the time between 2004 and 2008, I got to a place where I was using a, a camera that I can actually access those files. You are an early adopter, man. I was just like everybody else. Everybody, I mean, in that time. And if I'm to, sorry if that's how Locke finds out that he's adopted. <laughs> that's the story. Should have told him before now. I mean, I kind of feel like I don't want to look at like I have a box of that same t type of footage. I actually have that digital eight camera that you re refer to. I have mine. I also have yours. Oh, I thanks. I don't know how, but I have both of them in storage along with a bunch of tapes. Double barrel. <clears throat> and I can have those digitized too if this works out for you, but I'm really hesitant to do it. There's something severely depressing um, that I experience when I look back at old videos. Like I can barely bring myself to do it because mm. it makes me, it just feels like I don't know, I'm just overwhelmed with sadness when I watch it. Can you relate to that? I can't even articulate exactly why. It, no, it, it I, must have to do with like, it, it's much more complicated than just thinking that I'm getting old. Um, well, I, but yeah, it's like, I understand oh my that. gosh, so much, so much has happened and, but it's interesting that I, I don't, the only way I will remember a lot of things is if I were to look at old photos or videos. The videos are hard to look at too, so it takes effort. You have to sit down, you have to do it. But it just, it seems like it's this bittersweet experience that ultimately has an overarching sadness. Well, I, I understand what you're saying and it is difficult to articulate. The other emotion that enters me when I'm looking at this stuff is this sense that there's a frustration, there's a two part frustration. There's a frustration with, I don't know, it's like I, I got those files of lock that I can, I'll never get to. Like I, I, I really, every time I go back to old photos and old videos, I get frustrated with the fact that I lost that. Mm -hmm. Then I start trying to talk myself into, it doesn't matter because he's here and it's just like, 
what is this really gonna impact other than like his rehearsal dinner? You know what I'm saying? Right. Like it's like, oh, we didn't get to, it, there's a little gap there in the videos of Locke. Uh, but then there's this frustration that sets in with, shouldn't I do something with this? Like, like edit it. Shouldn't I edit this into something? And so, not too many years ago, I took like a look like uh, we actually have some some of Locke's birth. I guess I used a different f uh, video camera. Mm -hmm. It was like his birth I got, but then it was like I transitioned to a new camera when he came home, and that's what I lost. But I took it and like made it into like you know a five minute video that like kind of captured his 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 birth, and then it's got some music and that kind of thing. Um, but there's this sense that I should do something with this, and and that's why I haven't looked at that the honeymoon footage because I'm sure it'll be fun. But there's also this like sense of like, what well, shouldn't I? I got to do something with this now. But because it's four hours of footage. But here, what I have noticed is the technology, you know. It's getting better all the time, and what they've done now, you'll notice this, and I'm sure this is mm -hmm. available on other services. But if you if you've got an iPhone, now they take they take your videos and your photos when you go off on a trip, and they recognize that you were at a specific location, and they create what they're calling a memory. And this is I guess this has been around for a, at least a year, but I didn't notice it until a few months ago. Oh yeah. When all of a sudden I had like, oh, we went to Palm Springs and here's a nice little video with, and I can change the music and I can take, it's it's the the AI began to make the video for me and now I just yep. can come in and kind of manipulate it a little bit. So, and also the way that uh, iPhoto kind of, you know, organizes all this stuff, makes it much easier to interact with your old footage without feeling the need to sit down and bring it into iMovie and make, a, and make an actual video. Yeah, like I have one from a few weeks ago. They created an album called Saturday Evening in Los Angeles. Oh, that sounds fun. And then there's one, Rediscover This Day, May 16th, 2015. And it's two pictures of my family made into a collage that I took on that hammock that we used to have in the backyard. Hmm. So yeah, it kind of brings it up in an innocuous place where I can enjoy it and be a little surprised by it. But what is the utility? Want a Mother's Day movie? Make a special movie for a mother in your life. Oh gosh, too late. Um, what is, I, I do think that, what is the utility of it, uh, of having having this stuff? Of having your memories captured in this way? In well, a, in well, a way that didn't exist until a very recent history, but now it's almost a cliche at this point to talk about how you document every every part of your life. Well, what is the what? What's the question? What's the utility of it? Like what? It, well, it's what, interesting because I mean, it's it's the one thing across the board that people are going to say is that they're amongst their most prized possessions. They're run back into the burning home to get type of situation. But here we are talking about how much emotional burden is associated with it. But and of course, it now it's all in the cloud. I mean, if you don't have all your right, which is what I, if you don't have all your photos and videos in the cloud, I don't know what to tell you if if everything burns. But let me ask you this: Are you going to look at that? Honeymoon footage. You said you're going to sit down with the kids and do it, but it's four hours of footage. What are you going to do? And and you Get, think they're pop gonna, some popcorn? How you think? How do you think they're going to react to that? If you tell them you're going on a hike, and they're hating on it. No, they. Hey, kids, let's all sit down and watch Daddy and oh, Mommy's honeymoon. Are you crazy? You think they'll love it? They will eat it up. They love old footage of us. They love to hear the way that we talked. Oh, without even even without them in it. And then they love to watch themselves, and yeah, yeah. I mean, we, it's, we do we do that all the time. We gather around the computer at home and just go to old videos, and and just it'll be like, all right, here's one of Shepard talking, and no one knows what he's saying, but he's very enthusiastic about whatever it was, <laughs> and his hair looks crazy, and he's got food all over his face. So you don't get sad, huh? Uh, if I completely know what you're talking about, and I've had that. Like I'll sit down by myself and look at a bunch of old stuff and I get this like sinking. I'm old life and is life is short and what am I doing and what is really important? You have this overwhelming kind of burden on you. But when I sit down with my kids, it's like I'm creating another memory via another memory, you know, an older memory. So the, it's just fun when we do that. But if I do it by myself, I get sad. So I just don't do it by myself. Make it a family thing. Maybe I will digitize. I mean, there were, 
I remember, I didn't take footage of our honeymoon, but on our one year anniversary, Christy and I drove down to Charleston, South Carolina and had like a, a one year anniversary, second honeymoon type weekend. And I took a lot of footage of that. And then when I got back home, the next, over the next few weeks, I edited it into a video. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I had just gotten one of those like iDVD burners <laughs> and I burned it on a DVD. Yeah, you did. I just need to find the DVD. Yeah. But I remember there was like. Remember the DVD menus on iDVD? Yeah, there was the wedding one. Remember the wedding one, yeah. And then there was the other ones the that other weren't ones. the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> the non-wedding ones. Right. Um, I don't know which one I used, but I definitely remember that there was footage, in, there was like bubble bath footage. Hold on, you took bubble bath footage? Yeah. Of you and your wife? Yeah, I did. And that's digitized somewhere? It's, yeah, it, I mean it could be, you could probably Google and find it. No, you can't, but, oh gee, I wish I wouldn't have said that. No, I don't have any. It's not in the cloud. I don't have any compromising. No, but it's not compromising. Get, I don't, but, Here was the story. You get into that. I don't have any compromising photos or videos. I, I don't either. Anywhere. So let me let me clarify I do not have the that. bubble bath footage, okay? <laughs> we the place that we rented was in downtown Charleston. It was like a historical bed and breakfast. Like I really went really went for it. Really did. But it but they had fixed this room with a a jacuzzi, jacuzzi tub. And then just for you. Christy had bought the no, it was that's just in the room. <laughs> They knew hey, you were coming. Let's put a jacuzzi in Link here. Link Neal is coming with his <laughs> with his bride. It's we're going to build a jacuzzi. Year. He's brought a video camera. Put the bubble bath on. <laughs> <laughs> put the build a jacuzzi. Um and we turned the jets on that thing after Christy just Christy had brought all her own like bubble bath stuff because we had heard about this fancy tub in our room. And she had doused this thing. And then we turned on the jets and it was like an explosion of bubbles that overflowed. Not only it like started building up so high that I ran and grabbed the video camera and I was just filming the 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 whole room filled up with bubbles. Really? It, yes. It came out and went. It was crazy. Oh. And so I caught the moment in video form that I've never gone back and watched. Except, but I did edit it, so I have it in the mix with. I mean, I was filming everything. You know, back then before you had kids, you filmed everything. For a, for a well, little stretch, and then when you had kids, well, you 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 keep filming when you have kids, but yeah, when I don't think it, I guess it's not kids that made me stop filming, but I remember we were driving down to Charleston, and you know, on, you're on I ninety five, and there's all these billboards for south of the border. Oh yeah, every mile for like literally a hundred miles, there's a different billboard advertising this place just south of the North Carolina border called South of the Border. With Pedro the mascot. Yeah, which was and like. all these different uh, billboards. Culturally inappropriate. A little bit. Puns with Pedro. You think those are still there? Probably, they probably are. I believe they are. Yeah. I believe in my heart, but I don't know the truth of it. And I actually, I filmed these. You filmed every one? I filmed a lot of these and then a big part of the beginning of the video is a montage of these culturally inappropriate billboards headed down to South Carolina. You haven't watched that back. I have not watched no. that back. I gotta dig that up and watch it back. I mean. It, the kids would enjoy that. J just this morning, I, this, is the, this is the way. Especially now that we, I mean, that could have been for my 18th anniversary. Yeah, well, gift. Good, good luck with Man. that. This is the way I, video I works now 19. though. Like t this morning uh, I went to Shepherd's uh, school, it was the end of the year, you know, and they had a school-wide assembly and we were told by his teacher, you know, Shepherd is winning student of the month. Which uh, is why you went. Yeah, and his teacher also said in the same breath to my wife when he was explaining this, uh, he's like, yeah, um, I mean we, we give out, we got 26 students and we give out 20 awards throughout the year and so this is the 20th. It was kind of like he was saying that like, Shepard just made the cut. <laughs> Shepherd, it does sound like that. Shepard was almost in the six kids who didn't get an award of any kind. Uh, oh, but wow. he made the cut. Those poor six kids. 
They couldn't freaking invent six more awards. I don't know, man. You know, yeah. In the in the day, he was the he literally got he literally just made it in the day and age of participation trophies. You at least you throw some of those out there. Throw the kid a bone. He was the last one, huh? Uh, was I, he worried about it? Was he like, Dad? It's the last time I haven't gotten an award. Was Shepard he, had it was a complete surprise to him. The fact that we dropped him off at school. And he was like, this is a little weird. Mom and dad are dropping me off at school together. That doesn't happen. We were like, we're going to breakfast together. And then, which we did, so we weren't lying, but then we parked the car, went inside, and he was in the assembly, and he looked back and saw us, and he was very confused. <laughs> uh, but then he won, but, but the point of the story she is. that Shepard, we, we're here every day. We're watching your every move. Is that, the, I look, the kids are all in this auditorium sitting down and then in the back in, in, in a very small area behind where the kids are seated, all the parents are standing in about three or four rows deep of parents. They've all got their phones out because they're all there. Apparently it's not difficult to get student of the month because it seems that like 30 kids got up there. But it was one for every class. Okay. And it was both May and June, they were kind of celebrating together. Uh, but anyway, I was like, I'm gonna film this, but everyone else is all, everyone has their phone out and you enjoy the moments of your kid experiencing this thing and you're like, well, I'm never gonna remember this unless I film it. And also Jesse is filming it at the same time. It's like, you see all these husbands and wives together. Both filming it. Both filming it. Now she's I guess gonna, you can make 3D later. She's gonna turn around and post that on. She's not gonna post it. Social anymore. media. So she's not? No. Okay, because if me and Christy were both filming something or taking a photo, I'll be like, I'm not doing this because she's just gonna turn around and put it on her social media or whatever. No, it was posterity. Um, also, when- But when, we also, you both don't need to do it. That's a little overkill. But I've developed a technique of holding the phone up, getting the frame where I want it, and then taking my head to the side to be in the moment at the same time. Yeah. I'm trying to be present and not look and not enjoy it through the lens of the camera, but make sure that the lens of the camera is capturing what I want. You need a you need a, a forehead camera. You need a something to you need a headband. How about Google Google Glass? <laughs> that's that's basically what I need, right? This is the best advertisement for Google Glass shouldn't should have never gone away. Did it? People Did still it? wearing that? I don't know, right? But that is ultimately what it, what I'm trying to create. An experience. I where can do that. I am filming something, now, but can experiencing it at the same time. She no, and if I, she could do it if she wanted to. But if I began to mansplain to her how to look, if I was like, "What you really need to do is you need to be in the moment uh, <laughs> while you're filming it," and here's the way that you. But do why didn't that, you just she say, would get "Hey, pissed at me"? You know what? I let me. I'll film this, and you don't have to worry about. Filming I was just it. already committed to it. But when I zoomed in on Shepard's face as he was receiving his award. He did not look like getting student of the month meant much to him. Oh. It, he looked like he could have been finding out anything that did not matter. <laughs> <laughs> Name something that doesn't matter to Shepard and that's what, look, what he looked like was happening to him. Uh. And then we were like, they were like, okay, all parents come up and get pictures of your kids and uh, all these kids are smiling, super happy to be students of the month and Shepard just has a completely, he's just such a weird kid. He's got a blank, this blank look on his face. And then I'm like, Shepard, I'm like literally making the, and then he, then he gives this completely fake smile where his eyes stay exactly the Dead same. Dead inside. And he just goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> Standing up there with his student of the month award. Congratulations, son. But you have video of it, which you'll never watch. I could watch it right now and you'd probably laugh at it. Something. But but now with the AI, it'll pop up when you least expect it, and you'll experience. It. Yeah, you have a memory, and it's I love it now because it's in the cloud. You know, a lot of times I don't I didn't take footage because then I'd ha it would be a burden for me to figure out what to do with it. So we're finally we have arrived. We're finally at a point where it's we don't just, have to edit it. You, your your phone's already in your hand. You might as well video or, or photograph something, and then whoop, it's immediately in the cloud, and then the robots assemble it in a way that you can enjoy at a time that they think algorithmically you want to enjoy it. 
This is it, we've arrived. No, no, we haven't arrived. We, we've just put our foot into the door because here's what's gonna get really interesting. So you're, you're gonna have something on your body, whether it's an eyepiece that's like a contact or whether it's your glasses that is doing exactly what we just described. It's allowing you to be present in the moment as a normal human being, but also be capturing the video and audio of what you're experiencing and then. For the government though? Uh, hold on, L let's not talk about okay, the negative okay, side okay, before yeah. you talk about explore the positive side. And the AI is going to be so smart that not only is it going to be able to recall these things, but it's going to be biometrically measuring things in your body at the time, and it's gonna be measuring your heart rate and your, uh, your breathing and that kind of thing, and it's gonna know when you were emotionally moved by something. It's gonna know your emotional state that you were in when you were experiencing these things. And, and then it'll know how important it was. And then it's gonna know this meant a lot to Link. Oh, And snap. this is a special memory. Or this is when Link was incredibly mad. And it's gonna there, be able to show you the things that meant something There's lots of bubbles in this you. one. Oh boy, the, the if bubbles. If the bubbles meant something to you, they will be a memory. You won't, those it bubbles, won't be guessing. The, 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 the rapid increase of bubbles tells me that this is a memory worth featuring. And what will continue to happen, which is already happening as we continue to offload our minds into these devices and there's no, you know, teachers are still teaching students to memorize all kinds of things even though ultimately we're, we're supplementing our brains with, you know, things and, and it probably still is important but. But I'll add, I'll add to the experience because I mean, if I go to the, the the reason why I I describe sadness is because you're 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 looking at these old things. I think part of it for me is that there are things that I've forgotten unless I look at the picture. There's lots of memories you have that aren't memories of the experience. They're memories of the photo of the experience. So I mean, we've talked about how how memories are created and recreated. Every time you access a memory, it kind of rebuilds in a way that it has great potential to change or you know so i to put it simply looking at pictures from the past it resurfaces and solidifies memories so if you have a constant operating record recording of what's going on in every way including it, biometrics in a vr experience by the way then you can do something like you can be in a conversation like we're in a lot of times. Like, do you remember that? You remember that time when me, you, and Greg were we were at some park, and he like he tripped, and boy, that was so funny. Remember, we just laughed our heads off. You'll be able to call like, that up, and the, you'll be the, able to see just based off of that conversation, it can be called up. And not be only like, that, well, that was July twenty first, two thousand and one. Yeah, but not only that, not only that because it will be a VR experience. It won't just be a video, It'll, it will be It'll a be immersive. immersive virtual reality experience because the capturing technology will basically capture your field of vision and what you were hearing at the same time. And then you'll be able to, in the middle of that, say, switch to Greg's perspective. And you'll be able to relive the memory from Greg's perspective, switch to Link's perspective. And you'd be able to relive the memory from everyone's perspective. And also, I mean, we're just talking about an episode of Black Mirror here, I, it's not really that, it, it, this isn't that revolutionary. This is just what's going to happen. But is this an episode specifically? Um, I haven't seen every episode of Black Mirror, but I kind of. But you haven't seen this one. I feel like they've touched on something very similar to this. Somebody, I'm sure it has been. But this will be, without a doubt, this will be the number one thing used in court cases, right? Yeah, because that's it, why it won't happen. I mean, it's an it invasion will happen. of privacy. I, uh, no, no, no. I don't no, think it will no, happen. Well, hold on. It will happen because it's legal right now to wear a virtual reality capture capturing thing. And but people won't opt into it enough for it to. I, I'm you will opt into it because you want to be able to recall your memory. But what should be continue to be protected is my ability to tap into your perspective without a warrant. So you have to let me. I, I'm not saying. I, I'm saying you have to be. You have to submit to it. I'm not saying it should be something that is up in some cloud. But the problem is, as soon as it's captured in, it it will in be any in a cloud, cloud, anybody who has your password or anybody who hacks the system is gonna be able to get to it. Which ultimately, I just think that that's, you know, that's all pretty much inevitable anyway. But 
It's uh, but it'd be pretty cool to see what it was like to be in Greg to be in Greg's shoes when his pants fell down and he and he fell down. Well, that'd do be you, fun. I mean, do you think that you would opt into this thing knowing? I don't know. I I just I tend to think that I would opt into this thing for so I could have that experience to be able to say I want to go back to the day that my son was born and experience it in exactly what it ex- be there exactly like it was. The the temptation is too great for the average person to say no to that. I think. But then Phyllis, I remember I remember our a- first date. Like think about that. I remember I I can the first time I met my wife. The first conversation I ever had, the first words I ever heard out of her mouth. You're telling me that I can have the ability in the future, well I I can't have the ability, but you can have the ability in the future to access that in perfect, in a perfect VR immersive experience. You're gonna say yes every time. There are people in that, with just the advent of camcorders who, who live their lives that way. There's not a lot of them, but there are people. There's, I'm thinking of a specific documentary where there was a guy who recorded so much of his life. I can't remember what it is. Um, well, as you're thinking about that, you're, you're that's. I think the next genre beyond daily vlogging. Now first of all you've got live streaming and you know like Justine did that thing uh, with Justin TV. She was one of the first pioneers. Um, 24-7 live stream. And she wore, she wore a camera on her head. But what you're gonna be able to do in the not too distant future is someone is going to be streaming their personal experience, both what they're seeing and they're hearing and you're gonna be able to just live their lives. And there's gonna be people who are, inc- and there is a movie about this by the way. Can't remember which movie it is. Can't remember who's in it, but let us know in the comments because I know you know. Where you can inhabit somebody else's experience and they're gonna be celebrities. And that's gonna be a it's gonna be a genre. It's gonna it's an, an inevitable genre of media is gonna be this person lives an incredibly cool life and, and you're gonna be it. able to just tap into their experience and be like, and again, eventually there's gonna be haptic stuff so you're gonna be able to not only see and hear what they're experiencing but you're gonna be able to feel what they're feeling, who they're feeling. Yeah. You're literally going to be able to inhabit somebody else's body and people are gonna be like, well my life is boring but this guy, this dude that, it's gonna be this self-fulfilling prophecy where all of a sudden this person has all this, uh, people are paying and he's, and, you know, he's. He's he's looking at ads. He's looking at an ad, or there's an ad rolling in, <laughs> in the middle of this whole thing to pay for it. Or maybe you're paying for a service to hack into this guy's stream. But you're going to begin to. He's going to become. He or she will become incredibly rich and powerful because all these people. But think about what that's going to happen. I mean, I I think I don't I don't think that's a good thing. <clears throat> by the way, as someone who looks forward to the transhumanist experience. That kind of stuff scares me. I'm not excited about that. It just seems that's when things start getting very strange when people are just literally living vicariously through somebody else. But it will happen. It but, will happen in our lifetime. But you would sign up for the the 24/7 body documentation, life documentation technology even though you know that there's so many ways that it could be exploited that you can't even anticipate yet that could screw you over. Um, I, I tend to say I think I would yes. Tu- I think I would turn it off during certain moments. Oh, moments. Uh, but you would probably grow pretty uh, like a daisical about that, and you would get to a place where you're just like, oh, I'm going to leave it on. Who can, you know, it's all encrypted. A- again, it's, we talked a little bit about this uh, weeks ago when we talked about the ability to read people's thoughts. What we're really getting into is, if you can tap into somebody's experience, you're like v- w- one step away from just basically inhabiting their brain and knowing their thoughts. The The positive spin <clears throat> on all this is that you get to a place where you can just tap into somebody else's perspective and there is no privacy and, we, and we, we're like one step closer to, to that whole human organism concept that we're all incredibly, for good reason, uncomfortable with. Um, but 
I'm sure some ethicist will make very compelling arguments for why that is uh, not only the inevitable future that we face, but something we should welcome. I and, think and, I, in the, in a couple of generations, it'll be like you, the fact that you guys were ever scared of this is ridiculous. I think. I think I'm happy with where we are. You That's know, a good place. It's, and what, what if and scenario. what if you could just tap into your kids? And now, first of all, this is an episode of Black Mirror, by the way. There's an episode where there's an implant um, that a woman, a, a, a woman, uh, a spoiler alert. And not really going to spoil it, but just in case you don't want anything spoiled. But there's a there's a girl, a little girl, who uh, goes missing for a very short period of time, and the mom has all these horrible thoughts about what am I going to do if she actually gets lost? She gets her back, but then she gets um, the service. It's, it's an implant that basically allows her mom to pull up an iPad or a screen or whatever the equivalent is in Black Mirror and monitor everything that her daughter is seeing. But it also allows her to censor the things that her daughter is seeing. So anything that um, anything is negative, like even like a dog that's like barking at her and scaring her, is pixelated and, and muffled. Uh, and the audio is muffled. Hmm. It plays with some really interesting themes about privacy, including she keeps this thing. She keeps the this thing in the in her daughter's head her whole her whole life because she can't take it out. And there's some really interesting things that happen as the daughter gets older, and the mom has the ability to tap into this stream. Because again, you do it in the name of safety, right? You're like, hmm, I can know where my kid is at at all times. I can know what my kid is seeing at all times. Isn't that a positive thing? Black Mirror always takes, basically it shows you how this it could gets go wrong. dark. Which is, which is great dark. because you cannot advance in, in any of these areas without being very, very familiar with all the ways that it could go wrong. Mm -hmm. But you look back on the history of humanity and there's very few thresholds that we haven't, that we didn't end up crossing, even though we're really scared of it. <laughs> because once the threshold can be crossed, it's just eventually there's enough, everybody kind of gets up to the line and we're all looking at each other like, oh, we're gonna cross it and then somebody pushes and then you're like, okay, I guess this is where we're going as a species. <laughs> It happens and inev it's inevitable. Well, I, I'm I'm happy where I'm at. Okay, let's. <laughs> the fact that I could just pull up my phone based on a question in an envelope and just go all the way back to 2004 was it? Yeah. Except for my license, 2006 for me. Um, that's good enough for me. Yep. You know, get a couple of memories served back up to me. But boy, a few years later, we could go back to that that time we made. Homemade wine on the Cape Fear <laughs> River and passed it back and forth. See, I feel I feel like I can go it, back there in my mind right now. You think now. it's better? It is probably better than it actually was. It, you're, you're probably right. And we don't. And by we, the way, we don't have was, a choice. It was horrible. It tasted horrible. It was a fail. Yeah, but we could change. We could reprogram it and make it taste great. That's even worse. You know what? That memory that that's, first that first time we met. That's what we do in our memories now. You're like, you know, you talk to your partner, you're like, that first kiss we had was awkward. Let's reprogram that memory and make it great. There's an episode of Black Mirror. Editing your memories. Again, it's probably already been done. No original ideas here. <laughs> That's the subtitle of our podcast. No original ideas. Well, Carolyn, thanks for your question. Uh, I should be more specific. Carolyn, one, seven, nine, eight, zero, seven, four, two. Sounds like an episode of Black Mirror right there, her name. Thanks for your question. Who knows, We who knew that we'd go back more than a decade we for did. that one. Thanks for hanging out with us and letting us talk at you. We'll do it again next week. Hashtag Ear Biscuits if you have any thoughts for us and we'll keep the conversation going over there. Hashtag blessed.